well a very good morning to all of you the topic that we'll be discussing uh, in this part is uh, gaussian mixture model now first of all why we say the name to be gaussian mixture uh, model so for this we'll be splitting uh, um, the entire name into three parts first is the gaussian second is the mixture and third is the model we call it as a gaussian because it uses gaussian distribution in it that is why the name is gaussian and uh, the word gaussian came from the name of a mathematician that was carl gauss so it is because of uh, the name of this person that uh, we could get gaussian distribution and hence the name gaussian then is it is also called as uh, normal uh, distribution and uh, whether we call it as a gaussian distribution or normal distribution it is in the form of a bell shaped curve you can see in this diagram that uh, a particular curve is uh, formed that is why it is a bell shaped uh, curve now such kind of curves these are quite important in the area of statistics as uh, we could find out that uh, the real world data is continuous in nature like uh, the iq of uh, humans the height weight blood pressure so all are continuous in nature and when we try to compile and graph uh, such kind of continuous data then the curve that is formed is the bell shape curve now uh, you could see this uh, diagram uh, that is of normal distribution or uh, gaussian distribution that uh, here the mean median and mode are all the same that means there is symmetry about the center 50% values lies below uh, the mean and 50% values lies above the mean and uh, such kind of distribution is quite important like uh, we can see this uh, curve uh, where we are uh, showing the performance of uh, students then at the center we have the peak and uh, within this peak uh, most of the students lie that is the average of the entire class lies in the center portion then is 15% of the students are those that have met the expectations that have performed good and uh, then the remaining 10% towards the right side is the students who have performed extremely well similarly we could see on the left side then there are the students who performed below expectations and uh, extreme uh, left says uh, the students uh, who didn't performed at all uh, so a lot of information can be obtained from such kind of curves that is why they are quite common then is the second word uh, in this uh, name gaussian mixture model is mixture so it is called as mixture because it is a mixture of multiple gaussian distribution like you can see in the diagram here we could find that three gaussian distributions are there three peaks are there one two and three one in blue one in green one in red that is why we call it as a mixture and the third part is a model why we say it to be model because uh, uh, it is a probability model and this probability model is based on gaussian distribution so let's combine these three words together gaussian because of gaussian distribution or normal distribution mixture because mixture of multiple gaussian distribution and model because it is a probability model that is based on gaussian distribution that is why it is a gaussian mixture model now the next is uh, what are the application areas where gmm could be applied the first application area is the regression so what happens in regression is we try to find the relationship uh, between uh, variables uh, and for this a particular variant of gaussian mixture model is used and that variant is called as gaussian mixture regression second is classification uh, classification like binary classification yes no right wrong top bottom left right or spam or not spam if such kind of uh, classification is to be done then gmm can be used then is clustering uh, we can always group uh, the customers on the basis of buying behavior a particular set of customers are uh, going for expensive objects and another set of customers are going for Uh, cheap objects uh, so such kind of clustering such kind of groups can be formed and gmm is good in forming those groups then is another application area that is a dimensionality reduction we can always reduce the dimensionality of our data set that is we can always select the appropriate features and then uh, reduce it 
So GMM can be used for dimensionality reduction. Then the next area is the data generation. Uh, so you could see that uh, in uh, normal distribution or in Gaussian distribution we have a graph and uh, when we have a graph of the original data then we can always generate synthetic data out of it. So generation of synthetic data is uh, possible through GMM. Then is computer vision we can separate the foreground and the background objects uh, in a particular image or in, or in a particular uh, video. Let's say number of cars passing through the traffic lights. Then the car would be the foreground one and the road would be the background one. So such kind of problems are also solved by Gaussian mixture model. Then is another application area is anomaly detection. If any uh, data points deviate from the normal distribution, like we have seen the graph where students uh, 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 performed uh, related to the exam uh, so extreme right and extreme uh, left points so anomalies can be detected by that way also then is data modeling it is used to model data that does not fit in a single distribution sometimes the data is complex and when the data is complex then single distribution is not sufficient for such distribution we can use gaussian mixture model then is a density estimation uh, we have seen the curve and we can always calculate the area under curve and area under curve is nothing but the probability density function. So we can always identify the density by using GMM. Now there will be a question in your mind that uh, GMM is used in a lot of uh, uh, things uh, but the best use of GMM lies in the clustering uh, part and for clustering there are a number of techniques uh, like uh, centroid technique is there then hierarchical clustering is there then uh, other uh, uh, clustering area like density is also there but it is better than other forms of clustering because in this we can model complex data also that is why Gaussian mixture model is used then is let's find out how uh, this model works uh, for this let's take an assumption where we have a data set and in this data set we can take the heights of different people and the target problem that we are going to solve is that uh, using uh, Gaussian mixture model we need to cluster this uh, data that is heights of people into three different sets what sets tall people average people and short heighted people these are the target clusters then is the assumption since we are to make three clusters so we assume that there are three Gaussian distribution so we have plotted the same as blue green and uh, this uh, red uh, distribution then is we need to initialize the components first is we need to find out the mean mean of first Gaussian distribution of second and of third mean means the height the height of first uh, curve height of second curve height of third curve similarly the second component that is to be identified for each of the Gaussian distributions is the covariance covariance is the spread that is the bottom part spread of each particular Gaussian distribution along with the spread we can also identify correlations among different curves that is why the name is covariance and not variance have it, it would have been variance so only spread would have come here it is covariance so spread and correlations both are coming then is the third component is the mixing uh, coefficient what mixing coefficient tells us mixing coefficient tells us the probability what probability so probability always lies between a value of 0 and 1 so we need to initialize this mixing coefficient so for Gaussian distribution 1 we need to initialize probability of first cluster let's say we initialize it to be 0 0.30 for second cluster we initialized it to be 0.45 for third we initialized it to be 0.25 and sum of all the coefficients must be 1 this is the criteria then is we will apply the em algorithm here what is em algorithm em algorithm is expectation maximization algorithm expectation so we'll compute the expected value will be computed what is expected value expected value of each data point with respect to each Gaussian components while we consider all the points simultaneously. So this is the 
expectation expected value is to be computed then is whatever is the computation that uh, computation is to be maximized maximized means we will update the actual parameters what are the actual parameters like mean variance and mixing coefficient of the gaussian components with respect to all the data points will be maximized the algorithm iterates these in these two steps and it continues till convergence is reached what is convergence convergence means the model parameters are stabilized and our model is now made consistent so this is what is meant by convergence so what is the target output what we were looking for we were looking for a group of clusters so here you could see three different clusters one in red one in green and one in yellow so similarly we can also predict any new data coming to this particular algorithm that is a trained on such a data set as to which cluster it would join on the basis of gaussian mixture model so this was all about the topic if you got some knowledge out of this video then do like comment share and subscribe and thanks for watching